How many people know that he's the lifter of your head? Sometimes we're not even giving him glory off of our own strength. Sometimes we're not even making it to work on our own strength. Dealing with our children on our own strength. It's the grace of God being our strength made perfect in weakness. He's the lifter. Hallelujah. to me he said he just whispered two words generational curses I know an assignment when I hear one sometimes our great great grandparents can do things the word of God says that God has a way of visiting the iniquity of a generation or a person to the third and fourth generation. That means that what grandmama or granddaddy put in them, the children have it in them. Those children have it in them. Their children have it in them. And if the next generation acts on it, then their children have it in them. Their children have it in them. The, then if the next generation acts on it, I need you to understand, he said, I visit the iniquity. There's a difference between iniquity and transgression. Transgression is the act of sin. Iniquity is the impulse of sin. This means that something's inside of me. It's an impulse. Like say you decide to do something crazy. Before you do it, it's normally a thought before it's an action. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Like... You don't just wake up and just drink. You say, okay, I, something says take a drink. You say, well, I think I will take a drink. The, the, the impulse is what causes you to do it. And those impulses can come in through any act, any type of act. And I don't know why the Lord has me on this. It's like not even near the sermon for today. But the Lord just said to me, just whispered to me, he said, this morning, I need you to deal with generational curses. Now, the way you break a generational curse is there's a prayer called the prayer um, against the sins of the father. This means because it's never actually been forgiven at the level in which the iniquity took place or the sin took place, it continues to live through. The beauty of it is that Ezekiel, write this down, Ezekiel chapter 18, God says no longer will I just visit those sins on a person. So I'm not, I'm not going to hold later generations accountable for what the parent did. He said the generation that does the sin will deal with the sin. But the beauty of it is this, that Jesus came to break the curse. He was wounded for our transgressions. Someone say external. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's the impulse. The chastisement of our peace, our peace with God, was on him. And with his stripes, we're healed. I need you to understand that generational curses aren't just like, they can be any number of things. It could be anything from, from oaths or, or, or um, promises a generation made. So say they took an oath. And the oath had things in it as far as the consequences of the oath. And those, those, um, those symptoms can be seen in later generations. It could be a decision a person makes. And you see it. I teach this when I teach premarital counseling. That if you watch a family tree, you'll see the same patterns go throughout a family. So for instance, you'll see patterns of divorce. You'll see patterns of alcoholism. You'll see patterns of other things, patterns of sickness, patterns of Jezebel spirits, patterns of Ahab spirits. And so because daddy was a weak man and I'm a married woman that's a strong woman, I end up being a weak man who married, has a son who marries a woman that's strong who becomes a weak man who marries a, see what I mean? So you begin to see all of these patterns happen. And I have to share that because what happens is the enemy won't bring it, but he will surely leverage it. And there's some people sitting here this morning, this is the only reason God would have told me, who need to deal with some generational stuff. Now, you may not see it that way. You may have not even thought of it that way. 
But ask yourself, what makes me have an impulse to do this when no one else around me does? And it's the same thing my daddy did. His daddy did, or my mother did, and her mother did. And so let me take all of the monikers and the names that the culture puts on it to try to justify it away, and let me just deal with what's really going on. I want you to take a moment, and I want you to ask the question to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to reveal to you if there's anything going on in you that's generational. Is what I'm seeing something that came from generations before me? See, like real talk, you know, we, we, we like to not think about the bad parts because we think it makes us a bad person. Don't make it a bad person. We're pluralistic. We have different parts to us. But if there's a chance to get something out, should you want to live with it? But understand this, every generation has the ability to change the generations after them. So just like it came to you, it can end with you. And you can reset the pattern. The Bible says he visits the iniquity of those who hate him to third and fourth generation, but extends mercy to those who love him to thousand generations. The question is, will we pass iniquity or mercy? So let's deal with it. If that's you, stand up. And we start praying against it. Or maybe it's something that happened to you and you're starting to see some stuff show up in your children. And you're like, man, like they're about to do what I did. They're about to act like I act. Right where you are, just take a moment. And the first prayer is a prayer asking God to forgive the person who introduced the sin to the bloodline. Whether or not you met him, whether or not you even know him. Maybe someone was raped or someone got divorced or someone got invited to something that messed their whole decision making up thank you Jesus the second prayer this is between you and God you don't have to pray it out loud but just this is a prayer of confession of sin as well. I, Lord, I confess that I have seen this in my life. Just like I saw it in them. And I confess that this has been, this impulse is in me. Some of it worked out. Some of it I did. Some of it I didn't do. But I acknowledge that it's in me. for your forgiveness for holding on to this impulse for living out this iniquity I confess it and ask for your forgiveness and I receive your forgiveness based on what Jesus did on the cross thank you for paying for my sin through Jesus Christ Last prayer, now I ask. That you break this curse off of me. I release it. It is no longer part of my character. It is no longer part of the way I see myself. It is no longer part of my identity. I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. Take it.
take it from me, God. Everything that comes with it, the attitudes and the impulses and the drama and the, the feelings and the negative responses and the reactions, the frustration, the anxiety, the sickness, I release all of it. take a moment Holy Spirit begin a cleansing work in our midst uproot every piece of it plead the blood of Christ over my brothers and sisters there's no legal right uproot it Holy Ghost Father dispatch angels now to minister to our hearts right now to yank it out of us right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as you remove it from me, I receive life in Christ. I receive the joy of Christ. I receive the love of Christ. I receive the faith and self-control of Christ. I identify with who I am in Christ. Replace that with you. I give you permission to fill every part of my heart, to fill every part of my mind, to fill every part of my spirit. I just want to look like Jesus. I just want to live like Jesus. I just want to talk like Jesus. I just want to walk like Jesus. And so whatever they put in me, Father, I thank you for getting it out of me. Now fill me with your Holy Ghost. 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 Give me a passion for you. Give me a passion and a hunger for you like never before. Father, tear down every falsehood. Tear down every lie. Tear down every imagination until the truth of God begins to shine forth in my heart, begins to shine forth in my mind reveal the gospel to me again like I've never seen it before thank you Lord for breaking this off of me I declare this is the last generation that will deal with this mess going on in my family I am the last generation that will have to deal with this at night have to deal with this in the daytime. I'm the last generation that will have this impulse in me. Now in the name of Jesus, I declare that the mercy of God, the love of God will fill me and the generations after me. My children and my children's children will know what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. Playing church ends with me. Playing Christianity ends with me. In the name of Jesus, win my home, win my heart, win my bloodline. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout glory to the name of the one true and living God? Tell your neighbor, this ends here. Tell your neighbor, tell them, this ends here. Tell them, I'm the last generation that'll ever drink like this. I'm the last generation that'll ever be this crazy. I'm the last generation that'll smoke this much. It ends here. Somebody shout, it ends here. I may have made my mistakes, but his blood washed me one more time. It ends. Listen, if there's someone here, the Lord has pressed my heart, if there's someone here and you're concerned about your children and the stuff you're seeing in your children, come here, come here real quickly, come here real quickly. Hallelujah. I know the Lord had an assignment today. Hallelujah.
Put your hands out. Just put your hands out. Put your hands out. There is power, help me say it, in they're under your authority so I need you to understand the reason I ask you to hold your hands out is because those are the hands you use to raise your children and as long as they're in your home or under your covering you can still pray things out of them you have spiritual authority over them and so the enemy has to listen to you concerning them so right where your hands are it's not about the oil. The oil is symbolic of the presence of the Spirit of God. So right where you are, right at this altar, begin to pray for your children. Whatever you know is going on and even what you don't know is going on, begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for them. Begin to pray spirits out of them. If I didn't put it all on you, hold your hands out. If you're in the pew, go ahead and pray for the families up here. where they are. You know where they are. We're going to pray that the Lord takes the appetite from them. Takes the attitude from them. Anything the enemy has deposited, any weeds, any, any impulses he's brought through other folk, it's got to go. You paid too much money to raise these children. You put in too much work to raise these children to lose them to the enemy. Listen, the cross works. And we have power because of the cross. Pray that they will know Jesus. That they will know Jesus like they have never known Jesus before.
Some of y'all have babies. Go ahead and pray for those babies too. Catch them early. Father, as they're praying, I pray a heads of angelic protection around every child of every individual who's up at this altar. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you build, send cherubim to build a hedge around them. I pray a prayer shield around them, even where they are right now, even what they're watching right now, even what they're listening to right now. I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will guard their ear gates, guard their eye gates, guard their noses, that even what they listen to won't even infiltrate past their ears. We bind every demonic spirit that's come in through television, that's come in through conversations, that's come in through media. We bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. We uproot you, you have no place. These parents are praying against you. And so in the name of Jesus, we command you to leave their hearts, to leave their minds, to leave their spirit. We confess the sin and we send the sin and corresponding curses to the cross of Christ. We declare these children will be one for the kingdom of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says two can put a thousand. One can put a thousand, but two can put ten thousand to flight. In the name of Jesus, we pray, send angels right now to warfare on our kids' behalf. Lord, tear up everything that's not like you. Uproot everything that's not like you. Take the cussing out of their mouth. Take the liquor out of their body. Take the impulse out of their spirit. In the name of Jesus, we declare our children will be saved. Their children will be saved. Their children will be saved. We won't get to heaven and leave our children behind. We will see the salvation of the Lord. generation I hear the change you all may be seated Lord is pressing on my spirit to open the doors of the church. If you're here today and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, come here. You may be here, you may have even just come into the building, but today something's hitting you like, I need to give my life to Jesus for real. If that's you today, will you come? I see you, man. Others, come on, come on. I'll wait on you. There's some more. Come on, y'all. There's someone here saying, I need to give my life to Jesus today. Come on, come on, come on. You may be young, you may be older. I see you, man, come on. I see you, come on. It's about five individuals, I'll wait on you. But God has been calling you like, look, I want your life. 
I don't want your clapping. I want your life. I don't want your shouting. I want your heart. If that's you, come here. Come here. Come here. It's time for you to answer. He's called. It's time for you to answer. There's someone here saying, I'm going to come to Christ. And only two words I keep hearing are, but first. And the Lord says, tomorrow's not promised to you. You don't get right, then come to me. He says, you come to me because I'm who gets you right. And so if that's you today, come here real quickly. I see you. This is how you break the curse. You break the curse at the cross. If that's you, come here, come here, come here. You all believe Jesus died for you? Believe Jesus died for you? You believe God raised him from the dead? The Lord says in that moment your faith was enough to get you eternal life. But I hear the Lord saying, that's the first step. Now he's saying, receive me in your heart. Right where you are, lift your hands. to the body of Christ on behalf of the First Baptist First family. We just want to say welcome to First Baptist. Can we give God some praise? If you all will go to my right, your left.
For all of our first time visitors, welcome to First Baptist Church where we are welcoming people committed to discipleship and doing what y'all? Impacting the world for Jesus Christ. We would say excuse me, but we really are okay with what we see God do. You don't have to ever leave the presence of God with the same thing you brought to it. I don't care how heavy the burden may have been, how long it may have been in existence. The Bible records not only people who got healed, but how long they dealt with the sickness so that we could understand that regardless of the tenure of your sickness, Jesus can still heal it. Whether it's 18 years, or whether it's 38 years, or whether it's 12 years, or whether it's two days, God has the power through Jesus Christ to fix whatever the enemy breaks or whatever life breaks. And again, this is his agenda. So, so my plan was to come up here, give, give me a sermon, do what I do. And the Lord said, no, I need you to do this. How many people know the Lord knew what he was doing? Trust that. Now I will tell you this too. Change doesn't happen overnight. So contrary to popular, you know, super saved people belief, you may still make mistakes a lot. You're going to grow in grace. The biggest thing is that you start. You can never win a race you never start. So as you walk in Christ, day by day, you begin to look more like Christ. So again, don't beat yourself up if you get home and a cuss word slips out. You're like, oh, I'm unsaved. Let me just put the water back in the baptismal pool. And, and No, no, it's good. Like, it's, take some time. To, don't go cussing because you think you can keep doing it. I'm not saying that, but you know what I'm saying. So, y'all ready for the word? Let's do it. Go to Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to share this with you. I want to make sure I still handle the assignment given with integrity. Exodus chapter 20. <clears throat> when you get there, just indicate it by standing to your feet. How many people here are tired, like physically tired? Just being honest, you know. Yeah, okay. okay. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? One more time. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get some rest. So we're in a series entitled Reclaiming the Family. And today, I want to give you a sermon that you'll probably rarely hear in this culture. Last week, we talked about reclaiming fatherhood. Today, I want to talk about reclaiming rest. As we go into Sabbath week this week, for those who are visiting with us, our church every eight weeks takes a Sabbath week, meaning our ministry activity shuts down. And we let families go home and spend time with God, spend time with, with their families, and spend time really wrestling with their calling. Uh, and we do that because we realize that our kids need to see a rhythm of rest in their worship experience. So if they grow up seeing mom's a church workaholic or dad is a church workaholic, then they think when I grow up, good Christianity means I work and kill myself in church. But there has to be a rhythm of rest. I want to talk about that today. So tell your neighbor, get some rest. Father, we thank you for your word today. Teach us by your spirit according to the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, we ask it all, believing it done, and the people of God said together, Amen. You may be seated. We live in a culture that teaches us to not turn off. It teaches us that in order to be successful, you have to always be doing something. You hear it often echoed by people like Eric Thomas who says there are no days off. We assume that the proper disposition to have if you're going to be effective in any pursuit 
is to go until you can't go anymore. Many of us are driven by things such as more money or desire to be seen as important, so we begin to overextend ourselves until those areas that should be given primary consideration in our lives fall into the background of our superficial pursuits. So in the end, this workaholism has produced such thing as, things as negative family, physical, emotional, and mental byproducts that come with its lifestyle. Right now in Japan, they have a cultural tragedy that is taking place. It's called Karoshi. The actual name means death by overwork. And what it is is that people are working so many hours, they're literally dying on the job. They're in, in factories there, they've just passed a law that you can work up to 100 hours of overtime per month, and that's scaling it back. So I need you to understand that we don't have to travel that far to see overwork. The Sleep in America poll suggests that one in five people in America gets less than five, six hours of sleep per night. So it impacts everything from work performance to driving accidents to relationship problems and mood problems such as anger and depression. But if we're going to be serious about really being able to recapture a lifestyle that is in line with God's will for our understand, of the understanding of balance, our balance for work and rest, it's going to require that we hear and heed the directive of God pertaining to how we're to handle this life we're given. My brothers and sisters, our rest ethic is so important to God that he put it in his top ten list of things. It's right there next to thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. It, it's right there. And the next to it is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It's to show us that a period of rest is not simple, simply something that's born out of human psychological convenience. It's a spiritual and biological necessity. God's commandment reminds each of us today that there needs to be a balance between work and rest, and it's central to our worship of him and our relation to those in community. So God writes these words and gives them to Moses. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Translated, it means think about, commemorate, and invoke the time of rest and keep it set apart as holy. So I want to just challenge you today to remember to rest. How many people need some rest? Amen. This is that sermon. This is the only sermon I will ever preach that I hope puts you to sleep. <laughs> the word Sabbath literally translated means to cease or desist from labor. So in the Jewish community, it prohibited 39 specific acts during the Sabbath. So its philosophy was hidden in the belief that God rested on the seventh day of creation. And on that day, God's people were also to place a period of rest into the rhythm of their lives. So it's an in, in, in its intended sense, Sabbath is not just the absence of work. It's not just a day to have a day off and catch up on television and errands. It's the presence of something that arises when we consecrate a period of time to listen to what's most deeply beautiful, nourishing, and true. It's time off the wheel. When we take our hands from the plow and let God and the earth care for things while we drink, if only for a few moments, from the fountain of rest and delight. Now you may say, well, that's a Jewish concept, Pastor. That's what God told the Jews. Well, no, Jesus believed it as well. As a Jew, Jesus also encouraged his disciples to adopt this. So often we wonder, or we consider Christian church and church workaholism as something that God desires. If I just work at church all day long, then God will be happy with me. If I kill myself working at the altar, God will be happy with me. We think that if we burn the candle at both ends with our church duties, then we've appeased the heart of God to the highest heights of heavenly bliss. But we have to remember that it was God who actually instituted the Sabbath. Jesus reminds the disciples in Mark 6.31 that even our ministry work must be in balance. Let me say it again. Even our ministry work must be in balance. Jesus regularly found a way to escape the crowd 
and go to a quiet place and meditate before God. So the question is, how do we find this balance? And if we are to find this balance, we must return to the original commandment and refresh our acquaintance with God's callings to rest. So God calls us to do three things. Number one, create a rhythm of rest. Number two, make space to rest. And number three, refuse not to rest. Refuse to not rest. So the first thing I need you to understand is that this is a commandment, not a suggestion. Let me try it again. It's a commandment, not a suggestion. Let me say it one more time, shall we? It's a commandment, not a... So this calling to rest is supposed to be a required part of our worship. I'm going to give it my best shot. So the first thing is create a rhythm of rest. He says, remember the Sabbath day. Sabbath was created to remind us that everything that will work must have a period of rest. The expenditure of the energy that it takes to work requires a simultaneous commitment to creating a space of refreshment so that the body that works can be sustained. Tell your neighbor you're human. So your body, if you work your body, you need to rest your body. Coffee doesn't serve as a suitable replacement for rest. All of nature involves a rhythm of rest. Our feet rest between every step. Our heart rests between every beat. Our vegetation rests during the winter season of the year. Our bodies are naturally designed to rest between work days. So as we grow and retrain our lifestyles in this Western culture, we start concentrating on ways to expend our energy to the limit. And what it does is it we... We have these poor choices of time management, and when you add fast food to it and instant products to it, it leads to the decline of health. So in this commandment, God calls us to remember. Someone say remember. To remember the day of rest. This word means to commemorate or invoke. It's reminiscent of labeling a holiday or overtly recognizing a special moment. How many people make a big deal out of your birthday? Like, I celebrate all week long. It's, you know, it's my birthday is on Tuesday, but from Sunday to Sunday, I'm, we're going to warm up. We're going to do the, you know, we're going to do the hospital visit day, and we're going to do the got into the room day, and we're going to do the epidural celebration, and we're going to, you know, keep celebrating all the way through. First cry day, and first bottle day, and first day home. I'm celebrating all of it, the whole month. This is how people celebrate the entire month. Anyone here, sell, I see right, they just, yeah, July is all my birthday. No 4th of July, the, the picnics are mine and the Independence Day, all that's mine. It's just all mine. I go to the barbecue, better have a cupcake there for my, with a, yeah. The same way we make it so important to celebrate our birthdays is the same intentionality we're supposed to have on our rest days. How would your life look different if you made it a point to let the world know this is my day of rest? Understand a healthy rhythm of rest will not just happen. You have to be intentional about ensuring that the rest comes to become a regular part of your schedule. The same way you plan your work, you should also plan your What's funny is in our country, it's argued that 33% of the people who work in America never take vacation time. Over $700 billion on the table. Not even vested, won't even roll over. I want you to understand that, that if you're gonna take, have rest, you have to be intentional about it. So what time have you set aside to have a space that excludes stress and it's designed for uninterrupted fellowship with God, family, and yourself. Think about it. What day do you have? How many people don't have a day? Just real talk. Like, you know, I go nonstop. And even in your rest, your phone is still on. Now, rest doesn't mean I'm chilling with my laptop open. It means I shut off. 
everything. So I need you to understand, first thing is you have to create a rhythm of rest. So as you're working, it should be work, 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 rest. And that's the rhythm. So the more you work, the more you increase the rest. So first thing is create a rhythm. Someone say, I have to make rest happen. God says, remember it. Invoke it. Make it a holiday. Rest day. Fluff pillows and getting the movies ready. It's rest day. Don't call me. Call me Monday morning when I have to rest day. I'm going to church, then I'm resting the rest of the day. I'm trying to give you some clues. Some of y'all are like, I'm going to church, and I got a little bit of work to do Sunday afternoon. I'm going to wash some clothes, and I'm going to, listen, rest. First thing is you have to create the space. Second thing is you have to make space to rest. He says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. God reminds us to remember the day. In the Jewish culture, the Sabbath began at sundown on Friday, lasted till sundown on Saturday. This was according to the belief that God rested on the seventh day of creations. So for 24 hours, there were no shops open, no farming, no work, just rest. How would your life look if you took 24 hours to just rest. How many people have ever taken 24 hours to rest? I'm not talking about like you got laid off so you ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> or, you know, I'll get the sickness in a second, but, but like really said, okay, I work, but I'm going to block this time off. Understand this, when we talk about it, it we, the, the reading we get is from Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, which says, on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. So here's the principle that, that we start to wonder, like, how can this be? Wasn't the seventh day when God exhausted, took time off and rested with the satis with satisfied, excuse me, satisfied with the labor laborious work of creation? No, the ancient rabbis teach us that on the seventh day, God created what they call manure, which is tran tranquility, serenity, peace, and repose. In other words, God created rest. So God created the world, and then he created rest. Until the Sabbath, creation was unfinished. So only after the birth of rest was the circle of creation made full and complete. The picture is to remind us that our work is not complete until we've revisited the place of rest that existed before the work began. So I want you to think about how you feel when you first get up in the morning. Before any work starts, Minus all the stress of the work that's about to come. That same peace that happens before work should be returned to after work. Let me say it this way. Sometimes the problem is we, we disconnect work and rest. So I work, then I rest. Anyone think like that? Like I work, then I get off. I'm off all weekend. So the challenge with that is you think work is what you do. Rest is what you do when you don't work. Why not build it into your work? So I work, my job is from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. is my rest period. You see how it changes, the, how, how different that is? So it's not all separated. No, my work ends with rest. So when you leave, you say, guys, I would love to be here past 5 o'clock. You all are really wonderful people. I enjoy working next to you all. I enjoy the coffee table discussions. That's cool. But now my job shifts from your office to my house. And it becomes now the end of the full work day. So I want to share that with you because the early church, so how do we get to Sunday instead of like Saturday? The early church celebrated Sabbath on the first day of the week to commemorate the resurrection of the Lord on the first day of the week. That's why we worship on Sunday. And then in 321, Emperor Constantine, who became a Christian, made it a political day of rest. So that's why in Western culture, Sunday is the day we use for worship. But either way it goes, the picture is very clear. There must be a definite outline time that you set aside to worship God through your commitment to rest. So in the Jewish community, what rest looked like was it included lighting candles, gathering in worship and prayer, blessing children, singing songs, keeping silence, walking, reading scripture, making love, or, or sharing a meal. 
In our culture, it may be attending worship, going to the park, spending time with family, catching a movie, making love, or sitting quietly by the lake. Now, let me back up. Because y'all are like, what? For married couples only. Let me just be clear. Y'all are like, oh, yeah, Sabbath is zone. For married couples only. Let me, I don't get, don't go hook up with somebody. My pastor said, my Sabbath needs to be rested well, so I'm going to go, it's a Sabbath, you know. No, don't, don't, no, I didn't say that. I said for who? Now you said it too, so you got it. I don't make sure y'all call me saying, yeah, pastor, like, thank you for that sermon. Oh, you know, I had a Marvin Gaye ministry all night long. No, bro, I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. Now, if you're married, if you're married, hear me, it's in the list. It's on 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 the list. Amen. 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 All right. The point, the point, don't get stuck in the wrong part of the sermon. We're talking about rest. So the point is that we must make space that allows us to step away from the hustle and bustle of life and invest in the holy and eternal things that truly energize our well-being. You got to give yourself permission to rest. It's the time that we listen to the voice of God calling us to lay aside the reports, the papers, the books, the laptop, the iPad, the cell phone, the briefcase, and even the thoughts of work, of work and pick up that which matters most. If you don't allow for rest in your overly busy life, then illness will become your Sabbath. Your pneumonia, your cancer, your heart attacks, and your accidents will create a Sabbath for you. Write this phrase down. Making space for rest in life makes space for the rest of life. Write it down. Making space for rest in life makes space for the rest of life. When you're able to make space, you can hear your children's stories and challenges. You can sense and address your own inner anxieties. You can restore your spirit through communion with God. You can have space to let the dust of preceding moments of busyness settle so that you can sense the new and fresh call of God. Let me ask you this. If you're not making space for rest, what are you really not making space for? What are you missing? when you don't rest. Where is the space that you make for the rest of life? I, I'll just share this, Not it wasn't in the sermon, but most couples that come to me ready for divorce, you know what the number one issue with divorce is? Number one issue? Say it again. Kind of, I didn't catch any of them. Okay, yeah, so yeah, um, someone said time, the number one issue is people come empty. It's the time not spent pouring into one another. And so you get on eat long enough and you're frustrated long enough, it's horrible to sleep next to the charging pad every night and never be charged. And after a while you say, well shoot, if I'm not gonna be charged, I can be on E by myself. And the enemy says, you sure could. <laughs> Can I go a little bit deeper? This is for free. This is just a side note on that, to that end, because some people are like, he sure is right. Well, what's the remedy? The remedy is charged to be charged. Let me say it again. You don't spend time waiting to be charged. You spend time becoming a charge agent. The man who walks to a garden bed expecting fruit to come from dirt is a fool. Unless he's, he should only expect the dirt to yield what he's sown and cultivate it or what she sown and cultivate it. So instead of complaining, poor. Okay, that's another sermon. I'll get to that later in the summer. So, so I want you to hear that, but whenever you don't make space, you're literally saying you and all that, you, that comes with you has to be placed on hold 
for this. And this is what I've learned. I've watched enough people die and sat by enough bedsides at this point in my ministry to know no one will ever complain on their bedside about how many hours they didn't work. They will complain and be upset about what so much work cost them. The conversations they didn't have with children, the time they didn't make for other individuals, the times they never got to share their heart, all that they lost because of what they thought they were pursuing. Tell your neighbor, make space for rest. Y'all getting this? Amen. Amen. Last piece is refuse to not rest. He says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Someone say holy. This word holy is in most scriptures means to set apart or to consecrate. In other words, don't just see it as another time on the schedule. See it as a time that has the same level of importance as anything else you would put God value to. So Sunday should not just be another day. That's how it becomes easily replaceable with Tuesday. It shouldn't be Tuesday part two or Saturday part two. It's meant to be reverenced. So in the same way you reverence the Bible, the same way you reverence church ground, same way you reverence the pulpit and other sacred things is the way you are to reverence your time of rest. Primarily because it's the truest space where we meet God. It's the space for holy fellowship. So whether it's fellowship with God or a family, it's the space that heals us. It's the space that restores us. It's the space that helps us cry out to God and revives us through an encounter with God. It's not to be compromised as just free time. I need you to hear this. And it's not to be rescheduled with something else you didn't do during the week. It's to be held as a sacred God space and be careful to guard it as such. Write this phrase down. In order to refuse to not rest, it requires that the rest be refused. In order to refuse to not rest, it requires that the rest be refused. Sometimes you have to choose the greater yes and give the greater no. Okay, y'all, let's go. I, let me break it down like this. So the other day, about a year ago, I had an issue with my iPhone. I plugged it into a computer, and I accidentally reset the whole phone. I just, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so I reset the entire phone, and uh, so I tried to get the current data restored, so I took it to the Apple store. Get to the Apple store, they said, yeah, we can restore everything, but here's the problem. Um, we're going to have to have you wait in the store until it can be reset. So I said, do this, do that, do that. So I did what they asked me to do. After I did it, by, uh, the, the phone went into what they called restoration mode. So at this time, the phone had to sit dormant while all of the internal software got reloaded. Anyone ever been there? And so on top of that, I had to stay in the store because the phone had to remain connected to the network so that it could receive the data it needed to get properly reset. I tried to type on it and nothing happened. I tried to move the screen and nothing happened. It was like my phone said, hold on, James. I can't do this right now because I'm in a space where I have to rest from all of your work so that I can reset. I can't leave this space until the network is through with me. But trust me, you'll appreciate my rest when I get back. And there are some people here that God's been telling you, I need you to step aside and rest. I know you have been going nonstop, but I need you to get to a place where you can step aside and say, Lord, I give you permission to restore me, to restore my mind. And when people try to call, put your phone on do not disturb, tell them as much as I would like to deal with your drama right now, as much as I would like to answer your questions right now, as much as I would like to deal with your stuff right now, I can't do it right now. I have to step away so that the network can download some stuff in me that will help me serve you when I get back from rest. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, remember the rest. Your home will be better. Your performance at work will be better. Your thoughts will be clearer. 
Your priorities will be better. Your love will be brighter. Your joy will be more exuberant. And your friendships will be richer. Remember to rest. Tell your neighbor, get some rest. One more time, tell them, get some rest. Smile at them. They don't feel like you're talking down to them. Say, get some rest. And if you ha- tell them, if you have trouble resting, let me refer you to someone who can give you rest. The Bible said, Jesus said, come unto me. All ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am weak, meek, and lowly of heart, and you will find a rest for your soul. If you can't get rest from your family, can't get rest from your friends, can't get rest from your home, there is a place where you can get some rest. You can rest at the feet of Jesus. Is there anyone here who knows not only will he give you rest, but the word of God said, Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid is there anybody here who's ever had the peace of jesus won't his peace keep your mind that in a way it passes all understanding his peace will guard your heart his peace will keep your spirit somebody ought to shout a rest listen get some rest but don't do it accidentally Make space for rest. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. And keep it. And holy means to be set apart. Set apart. He tell people, you calling me like it's Friday. It's the Sabbath day. Even in the old days, grandma used to cook on Saturday. But some of y'all didn't have a big mama like that. Some of y'all like your grandma would be able to cook on Sunday. You know, but, but grandma, grandma will cook on, <laughs> I shouldn't go there. In the older days, they would cook on Saturday so they could rest on Sunday. Write this down. You're taking notes. Let me just, let me, can I just teach straight up? Just straight up. So first thing, first thing is this. First, write this down. Number one. I need a specified day of rest. Sunday's the first. That's easy. That's a given. That's, our culture is accepted as a Sabbath to some degree. Second time of this, the second thing is this. I need to budget rest. So if I know I'm not going to be working, then my budget, if someone looked at my finances, they should be able to tell, man, they must rest on Sunday. But if I go a little bit deeper, I need to, the third thing is I need to plan for a day of rest. So the reason most of us don't rest on Sunday is because we never actually plan to rest that day. If you plan to take the whole day off, you work differently on Saturday and Friday and Wednesday and Thursday. Then the fourth thing is this. I honor God most when I rest. What, I, there's another scripture in, in, in Exodus where God makes it plain that the symbol of Israel was their Sabbath. So if you went by the community, everyone was working around them except them. And even to this day, if you go in the Jewish community of any major city and you try to get some jewels, try to get some diamonds, it's closed. And they will tell you, no, we don't work on the Sabbath. What would happen if the church did that? Though the world will cry after us, the cries would go ignored. I need you to hear this. Now, I have to share this with you, and my heart to yours, it's not about just successfully preaching a sermon or something like that. It's because I'm watching the health of our people. And there are a lot of people who are dying just because they won't get balance. And the sad part is our culture hopes you don't get it. Because when you get sick, people make money. When they get you in that system, take this pill for that. Oh, Lord, this pill costs something in your kidneys. Take this pill for your kidneys. Oh, Lord, it costs something in your gastrointestinal tract. Take this one for your gastrointestinal Before you know it, you're on 15 pills. And you could have remedied it with one day of rest. 
And there's some things you can't get around, but there are some things rest does resolve in you. And, I, and I've shared this, not, you know, I believe God gave this word because he wants us to rest, me included. How many people are, are willing to say, Lord, I hear you today? We're going to rest. Next week, we'll talk about it, go a little bit further. I know it's 4th of July weekend. You know, some people skip church to go cook out. And now we're streaming. They're like, shoot, I can just watch it on the thing. Grill this food here, man. You know, grill this food. You know, yeah. Um. Tell your neighbor, get ready on Saturday. Get ready on Saturday. Yes. You can put them beans, put the meat in the beans on Saturday. Warm it up on Sunday. Amen. <clears throat> but I want to talk about next week, and I really encourage you to come. I want to talk about blessing your children next week. Because part of what happens in the Sabbath in Jewish homes is they would pray for their children. But part of that nightly ritual was they would pronounce blessing on their children. And I think two things we've gotten away from. One is resting. And number two is passing on blessing. So we'll talk about that next week. So we'll see you all uh, next Sunday morning, bright and early at 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock for those barbecuing, and 8 o'clock for, bar for those eating, 11 o'clock. Amen. So uh, let's do this. I want to close out with prayer. But I want to pray that the Lord gives you rest. Before I do that, what we did do, so this past couple of years since we were in pandemic, you know, uh, I, I decided to design some things because I, I was around a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues in the ministry were going into counseling. People were quitting churches and, and church people were going through a lot of things emotionally. So I said, wait a minute, I think it's wise to create something that would help people deal with PTSD that comes from pandemic, to deal with moral injury and those types of things. So I created an entire music project. It's on Apple or whatever. But on top of the music project, we created some other tools to help people rest. So I wanted to give you just links to these tools and, and so you could have them. So on the screen, this first one is a, is a guitar, just quiet guitar music made with a certain frequency and it's designed to just help you chill. So if you want this kind of a chill spot, relaxation spot with just acoustic music, you can scan this on your phone and it will, it'll take you right there. It's on YouTube, so you can put my carol and it'll, it'll pop up. Um, I got it. Okay, you got it. <laughs> you got it. Help your neighbor. If you see your neighbor struggling, they, if they got, you know, if they have Google open and they, you're trying to get the, just say, look, I got you. Just give me the phone. I, I'm a millennial. I got this. Like, we've been doing this since the 90s. We got you. Um, we we're born into it. The second one is this. The second one is what's called a, a mindfulness exercise. So sometimes we go so much, it's hard to get our minds kind of centered. Y'all know anyone ever been there? You try to pray, and you're thinking about the greens and the children and the softball, you know. So this is a mindfulness exercise. So this one uh, walks you through, like, just a mindfulness process to help you get your mind centered uh, on the space where you are. Uh, this one will, will bless you. It takes about 10 minutes, but it'll, it will kind of get you focused. Okay, y'all got it? You got it? Amen. If you don't have a QR code scanner, you can stop by the connection table out front. We can help you download one so you don't feel left out on these sermons. Like, man. Yeah. It's okay. Got it? The third one, the third one is um, just relaxation music. So this was created for people who have, a tr have trouble sleeping. Anyone ever have trouble sleeping? Yeah, so drink a lot of water, that'll help too. Lavender oil will help. But also I recommend this. So what this does is this is actually created with a certain frequency to help you wind down. It's actually, the name of it is heavy eyelids. Uh, and so it's designed just to help you kind of calm, help your body calm down. So uh, it's, uh, you can scan that as well. So these three will help you uh, and will truly bless your life. Amen. Amen. So let me pray for you real quickly and then we'll go. Father, I thank you for calling us to rest. I thank you that you, you sent Jesus Christ to give us rest and peace with you. But also thank you that through Jesus Christ, we're reminded of the need to not become workaholics, but the need to find balance and to find rest. I thank you that Jesus showed us what it's like to get away so that we can commune, connect, and connect with you and family. Now give us the grace and the courage to make space for rest. Thank you for how you will meet us in that space. Thank you for how you will minister to us in that space. And thank you for how you will restore us 
in that space. In Jesus' name, we ask it all, believing it done, and the people of God said together, amen. Can we give God some praise for his word this morning? God bless you. Hallelujah. Were y'all blessed? Amen. Amen. Remember to rest. I just want to um, add a, a scripture to all the scripture that he gave you. Check out Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 8, where we get the opportunity to enter into God's rest. He, give it, he gives it to us. And he mentioned this at 8 o'clock, but um, it is a commandment, amen, that we rest. So y'all pray for me, and I pray for you that I continue to be obedient in resting in God, amen. Hallelujah. I also want to give an opportunity. I know that um, he opened the, uh, Pastor McCarroll opened the doors of the church earlier during the middle of service. But um, this is another opportunity for you to uh, give your life to Christ. So he promised, I mentioned, he promised us rest. He promised us peace. He gave us a Holy Spirit just to uh, be with us. So we get that when we are in Christ, right? When we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And so here is another opportunity for you to um, profess that. And so if there are three ways um, to join our church. One, if you want to give your life to Christ, again, as I mentioned earlier. And if you want to join us by Christian experience or if you want to join by watch care. Watch care is if you're here for a certain amount of time, you have a church, um, church home back at home, you're here in school, and you just want a spiritual covering, you can um, join us in that way. And we'll be, well, not me, but Pastor McCarroll will be your spiritual covering <laughs> while you're here. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, I just pray that, that we all be obedient to this word that was given and that's what Hebrews is talking about being obedient to the command of rest and that's my prayer for you and for myself amen hallelujah hallelujah and also at this time um, we can give right we can um, give for the um, operation of the church and also for sowing your seed right so there are several ways that you can give there are cards on the back of the pews um, where you can scan again a QR code or you can give online um, and also the envelopes when you leave out the door there are uh, baskets there that you can um, fill out and put in amen and so I'll just pray now for um, for those that are giving, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. I, I pray, Lord God, that the seed, the sowing that is being done today, Lord God, that it is given wholeheartedly and not begrudgingly, Lord God, for your um, lifting up your, up your kingdom, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you for the hearts that are giving, Lord God. And it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. And also for those who want to join, there's our um, people over here to your left that you can meet after service. Amen. Amen. So now I have some announcements. So this summer, as you know, we are gathering back together and we're having like a family reunion of events all summer as we reopen the church and reconnecting because we haven't seen each other in quite some time. And so we I think this is our third one that's coming up. Uh, one of our family union re events and so the next one is scheduled for Tuesday July 11th where we will have a FBC skate night at Smyrna Skate Center and it will be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. so mark your calendars as July 11th a skate night in Smyrna from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. and the next one after that is July 20th where we will have our purple and white basketball game and that will be at Patterson Park Community Center right down the uh, road here and it's for females and males over the age of 14 that you can sign up and um, participate in that um, and also our nursery will be reopening hallelujah so we are working diligently and getting our nursery reopened this summer. So um, 
but they need your help. So if you know, if you or someone you know would like to volunteer in the nursery, please stop by um, the, the lobby, the table in the lobby, or email nursery at fbcmurfreesboro.org. That's nursery at fbcmurfreesboro.org. And they will definitely need your assistance. If nothing else, your prayers, right? So pray that um, so we can pour into our babies as uh, we um, gear them up in the Lord. The next one is uh, FBC Habitat Build. The housing is complete, y'all. The It is complete. It is complete, and we will host a home dedication on Thursday, July 14th. Mark your calendars. Thursday, July 14th at 4 p.m. at 1248 Twin Oak Drive. And we just plan to celebrate Amber and her family and her blessing. Amen? Amen. That's so exciting. And my last announcement here is for back to school. Can you believe it? Just is, it is right around the corner. <laughs> I need like another month. Uh, so, but we're we're hosting a back to school clothing drive for our children, and so it, it begins now today um, through July 18th. So they're collecting new and gently used clothing for our community kids as they head back to school. And they're also are accepting gift cards. So if you don't have any clothes or you don't want to go out and buy clothes or whatever, you can give gift cards. So Walmart gift cards and Target as well. And so we're just looking to bless our community and give our children just the confidence in, in going back to school. Amen. And give them a great start. So I don't know about you, but I have been blessed. I've been blessed. And I pray that you would be blessed as well. And as a remember, as a reminder, this week is Sabbath week, so there will be no meetings, no anything, and so this is your opportunity to get in practice of rest. And if you're not used to it, just take one day, just one day and just rest, amen? So let us all stand as we close. Hallelujah, one more, okay. All the brothers say amen. So on July the 16th, I believe it is, July the 17th, mark your calendars. It's a Sunday afternoon. We're having what we call the Backyard Barbecue. Just for the brothers, we'll do it at Patterson Park Community Center. It's no cost to you. If you want to sign up it's, and you don't have the app, stop by the table out front. We'll get you plugged in. Also, if you want to sign up for skating or you want to sign up for uh, the basketball game, please sign up. We're inviting everyone to play for the basketball game. If you're older, as long as you're medically fit, amen. Uh, you're older, younger, old school basketball. If you were the, the star of your team in 75, come on out. Uh, we'd love to have you. Come on out, go have a great time. The last thing is this. Get your phone out one more time. Get your phone out one more time. So we're gonna introduce something this Sunday we've never done before. It's called Worship After Worship. So for the first time in the history of our church and probably any church, we're actually providing you with a playlist for you to ride home to. So you get to keep having church all the because I know you put back on 92Q. It used to be gospel when you when you got out. It's gonna be Aaron Allen when you get back in. So we want to make sure that you have a playlist to play. So each week we'll give you a playlist that you can listen to. So on your way home and all throughout your week, you'll have a playlist. Amen. Amen. Also, can we give God some praise for Lee Jackson? He's doing this. So we thank God for him. All right, go ahead, reach across that aisle, reach across that aisle. As you grab that hand, just tell him it's good to see you this morning. It's good. Yeah, smiling, don't just mean mug him. Good. No, it's good, good to see you this morning. God bless you. Father, we thank you for this time together as we leave this place, but never your presence. We are excited to go into this world being the light of the world and the salt of this earth. Use our light. Let our light so shine before men that others seeing your good work give glory to our Father in heaven. We thank you for how you're going to use our lives to minister to the hearts and minds of those people we will encounter this week. And we go forward excited about what you're going to do. Now as we leave this place, but never your presence, cover and keep each of us as we go to our various places of destination. Be with us throughout this work week and throughout this week of life with our family, our friends, our acquaintances, and ultimately with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it all, believing it done, may the grace of God 
the love of God and the peace of God rest, rule, and abide with each of you until we meet again on this side or in glory. And all who received it, received it by saying amen, amen, and amen. Hug that neighbor, tell him have a wonderful day. Could have been me, thank you. Our dog, but I thank you. With no food, but I thank you. Couldn't have no clothes on, but I thank you. We got a friend, yeah. Could have been just another number, I thank you. With a tragic end, God, thank you. You didn't see fit. So I know you were blessed by the content. I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more content in the coming weeks, hit that notification bell. We were so glad to have you sharing with us today. And we do pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, your family, and those you impact on a daily basis. Take care. No